Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. I'm actually a bit grumpy today. Should probably put this into context for you. I'm actually recording this on Saturday, which is supposed to be my one day off. The reason I'm recording this on Saturday instead of on Monday, which is when I would normally record and upload Tuesday's video, is because I'm spending all day on Monday in London. I'm going to be on board HMS Belfast doing a thing. And yes, I'll be recording, and yes, there will, it might not be a video, but there'll definitely be something uh, coming out of that. I suppose I should stop complaining, really. I mean, having to spend the whole day on board HMS Belfast isn't exactly bad, is it? It does get me out of the house, after all. I should probably stop complaining and just get on with it. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is Moggy 2 in an all Tier 9 domination battle on the mountain range map, and as you can probably tell, he's in the Soviet Tier 9 destroyer, the Tashkent. Although calling it Soviet is probably stretching it a little bit. This was built in Italy for the Soviet Navy. Actually, a whole lot of Soviet destroyers were built in Italy for the Soviet Navy, usually on Italian designs, or at the very least inspired by Italian designs. And the thing about the Italians, they do like to go very, very fast, and the Tashkent is no exception. Top speed of 42.5 knots, and that's without the engine boost or a speed flag. A lot of these Soviet destroyers were the fastest ships in the game until they inevitably got power crept by most notably the French, for example. The thing is, their speed and firepower in their guns were the only real selling points of these ships because their stealth was absolutely horrendous. I mean, when you look at the base concealment on the Tashkent, you don't get much change out of 10 kilometers. The concealment on these things is so bad that most Tashkent captains don't even bother building for stealth at all. You can certainly use that insane speed to rush into a cap early at the beginning of a battle, but your lousy detectability practically guarantees that you're never going to be allowed to finish capping because you will inevitably be spotted halfway through, and that's exactly what's happened to Molly too. A Kitaka he's actually been outspotted by a Kitakazi. That's how bad the Tashkent stealth is. Now, the question of who would win in a fair gunfight between a Kitakazi and a Tashkent is a very good question because both ships are fearsome gunboats, but the Kitakazi appears to be smart enough to understand that he doesn't actually need to win a gunfight with a Tashkent. All he has to do is smoke up, and with half of the enemy team shooting at him, and with nothing visible for him to shoot back at, Moggy 2 is forced to cut his losses and bail out, leaving the cap circle in the hands of the Kitakazi. In fairness, I don't know if that was a tactical choice from the Kitakazi, or whether or not he just shit his pearly pink panties and panicked and hit the smoke button when he lost what looked like half of his health from a couple of opening salvos from Moggy 2, but either way, the end result is the same. And of course, Moggy 2 did not have the option of doing the same thing, and yes, if you're paying attention to the battle feed above the minimap, his team have just lost two destroyers. If he had smoked up, the team would have probably lost three destroyers, because he would almost certainly have eaten a bunch of torpedoes. But he's in the Tashkent, he didn't have the option of smoking up. Because one of the consumable choices for the Tashkent is to replace your smoke generator with a heel. And that's what he's done. This is what a lot of Tashkent captains do because the concealment is so bad anyway that they simply go for an all-gun build and then slap the heel on it to cover up any deficiencies. And an all-gun build Tashkent is pretty potent. You can get the guns firing out to a range of 15.2 kilometers. I know cruisers that wish they could fire their guns out to a range of 15.2 kilometers. Of course, the downside to this is that every time you fire the guns, anybody with the line of sight within 15.2 kilometers can see you but you can do 42.5 knots without speed boost and a speed flag. And while you're big by destroyer standards, you're still kind of small by cruiser standards. So you're not an easy target to hit. Now, you do have horrendous rudder shift and maneuverability and turning circle, despite the insane speed, so you're not an impossible target to hit. But at 15.2 kilometers, you're still going to be hard to hit. And the other thing about the Soviet destroyers is that compared to, oh, I don't know, the American destroyers, at 15 kilometers, your shells don't take all day to get there. So you can actually be effective 
at shooting up targets at ranges of 13 to 15 kilometers in a way that American destroyers really struggle to. Of course, the downside is that with higher shell velocity, you have flatter ballistic arcs, so you can't really abuse islands and lob shots over them in the way that the Americans can, but hey, you can't have everything. And this isn't really a ship that's designed to do that sort of thing either. It is very much an open water gunboat because you've got no stealth, but you do have very hard hitting, rapid firing, long range guns. So use them. And he is. Hoist the Yachtland managed to disengage there. And of course, he doesn't have smoke either. But with. Oh no, oh dear, he's dead. Yep. He had his engine knocked out, realised, oh shit, I'm gonna die. Triggered his damage control, and then activated his engine boost. But he'd slowed down just enough that he wasn't able to get out of detection range. Well, I suppose technically, since the Riga over to the west had just triggered his radar, he wasn't able to get out of radar range. Either way, he's dead. And once the Riga's radar had expired, the Missouri, also over to the west, next to the Riga, popped his radar, which was extremely bad news uh, for the Yugamo. Although he's managed to either outrun it or outlast it. Next, I don't know if you can see there in chat, the Missouri is asking, radar again? Now he's done it in battle chat rather than private team chat, and that may be a mistake, or he may have done it on purpose to convince that Yugamo <laughs> to keep running. Um, which, if he did it on purpose, is actually pretty smart. One thing to point out about that whole engagement, nobody at any point up until right now ever stopped to shoot at Moggy 2. In stark contrast to what happened to those two enemy destroyers the second they were spotted. Also in pretty sharp contrast to what happened to the other two friendly destroyers in the middle and the other side of the map the second they got spotted. But Moggy 2 has, yep, whether they did it on purpose or not, that little info leak in uh, battle chat has convinced that Yugamo to bugger off because he's no longer spotting Moggy 2 and Moggy 2 is now capping uncontested. The Neptune over there is looking like a very juicy target. But Moggy definitely doesn't want to shoot at anything right now, at least not until he's finished capping. The, uh, the Riga is burning his radar again, but there's nobody else in the cap circle. It seems like a little bit of a waste of a radar. I'm sure Moggy would feel a lot happier if that Neptune was... Yep, there we go, they've got the Neptune as well. Nice. And any second now, there it is. Moggy's team is now in possession of all three of the caps, and they have equalised the kills. So, from this point on, they no longer have to do anything aggressive. They no longer have to take any risks. They have the caps, it's up to the enemy team to make the risks and make the mistakes trying to take the caps back off them. And at this point it's become traditional for me to say, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> well, that's more or less exactly what Moggy 2 does, at least for the next couple of minutes, and certainly over on this western end of the map with the Riga, the Missouri and the Frederick the Great, that's what the rest of his team does. Elsewhere, however, not so much. Moggy 2 busies himself keeping these enemy battleships over here spotted and at a nice safe range thanks to a combination of how far away he is from them and how quickly he's moving mostly able to avoid all return fire while keeping them lit up for the Riga, the Missouri and the Frederick the Great. Elsewhere on the map Drama is unfolding, and while Moggy 2 just busies himself spamming high explosive at those enemy battleships to the north, we're going to focus on the minimap from here on in. Somebody, and I'm assuming it's the Kitakaze, because nobody can see him, is flipping the central cap at Bravo. But slightly further to the east, at Charlie, there's some real drama unfolding. Do you see the enemy Georgia? Watch this guy. But also pay attention to the enemy Jutland just slightly further to his north. The Georgia is really going for it. Contesting Cap Circle Charlie and rushing a whole group of friendly ships pretty much on his own. The friendly Jutland here is moving to investigate the Cap being flipped at Bravo, but well, he's not quite quick enough. The Jutland up to the north of Charlie has just nailed the friendly Ibuki. The Kitakaze has completed, and I'm assuming it's the Kitakaze, but I'm probably not wrong flipping the cap circle at Bravo. 
the Georgia over at Charlie has just gunned down the Iowa and then because hell why not chicks dig scars and glory lasts forever he also rams and kills the Ismo. So in the space of about a minute for the cost of one battleship the enemy team have knocked out an Ibuki, an Ismo, and an Iowa. They have flipped one cap circle although the Jutland is doing his level best to flip it back but he's just been spotted and is coming under fire from the enemy Jutland. And don't forget, it wasn't the enemy Jutland who flipped that central cap at Bravo, it was almost certainly either the Yugamo, who was running in that direction, or the Kitakaze. Either way, that one Jutland is in a perilous position, because he has anything up to three destroyers gunning for him, and whoever else they're spotting for. So he's almost certainly just popped his smoke. I mean, unfortunately, we can't actually see it from over here. It's all happening on the minimap. But the rest of the team, those that are still alive, have recognised that that Jutland is in trouble and needs the team's help. So the Riga in particular, if you look on the map just to the south of Moggy 2's position, is crossing the open water there to get into position to give him some radar cover. And while the team, collectively, those who are still alive, because we just lost the Frederick the Great as well, shift positions in order to try desperately to hold on to those three caps. Has the undivided attention of one tier 9 battlecruiser, three tier 9 battleships, and judging by those torpedoes, one tier 9 destroyer as well. Amazingly, the Jutland over there in Cap Circle Bravo is actually doing it. He's managed to drive off anybody putting pressure on him, and he's about to reflip that Cap Circle while Moggy 2 desperately holds on to Cap Circle Alpha over here. Unfortunately, while that hero Jutland in Bravo, with support from his surviving teammates, has managed to drive away, well, at least the enemy Jutland from Cap Circle Bravo, he was driven off in the direction of Cap Circle Charlie. And there's nobody in a position to do anything about that if the enemy team realise, hang on, Maybe instead of fighting for the cap circles that are occupied by enemy ships, we should go for the one that isn't occupied by enemy ships. And I think the enemy Jutland at least is rapidly coming to that conclusion because he was last seen heading in the direction for Cap Circle Charlie, where there are no friendly ships. But how did the enemy team know there are no friendly ships there? Well, they can count, can't they? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's only five of them left. And the two destroyers have both been located. Clearly the Jutland was flipping Bravo, and Moggy 2 isn't exactly being inconspicuous over here in Alpha, is he? He's been blazing away at all of these battleships and battle cruisers for the best part of the last three minutes, making no effort whatsoever to go undetected. And it's only now that the Jutland has managed to retain control of Bravo that the team switch their fire and once again come to the support of Moggy 2, which is going to be real bad news for that Minnesota. But here's what I don't understand, because, well, as well as the Minnesota over there, there's a Jean Bart, a Masashi, an Alaska, and presumably, judging by all of the random torpedoes that seem to keep heading in this direction, there's a Yugamo out here as well. What exactly are they all afraid of? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Are they all thinking, oh no, I might get torpedoed? By what? The Tashkent that's made no effort whatsoever to go undetected for the last four minutes. Or the Jutland, who has quite clearly been flipping Capture Point Bravo and is miles away, although he's heading this way now, so good luck with that. Fortunately for the enemy team, while all of these enemy battleships have been sailing around in circles with their pants on their heads for the last five minutes or so, the enemy Jutland has at least been thinking and has flipped Capture Point Charlie. At this point, there are so few defenders left alive on the team that I'm, I think the team has just decided, yeah, he can have that one. They're going to hold on to Alpha and Bravo. Or at least go down fighting. And unfortunately, the Riga has done just that. There's now only four of them left against seven enemies. But they do still, thanks to holding on for as many caps as they have for as long as they have, have a good 200 point lead. And with two caps under their control, as long as they don't lose any more ships, they should be able to pull ahead even further on points. That, of course, also assumes that they can continue to hold on to these two cap circles, and since Moggy 2 in the Tashkent appears to have been outflanked by at least one enemy destroyer, judging by the direction from which the last set of torpedoes emanated, 
and the probability that these enemy battleships have finally been authorised to take their daily dose of brave pills and strap their man pants on, he is being forced steadily back. And the enemy team are now flipping both Alpha and Bravo and pushing hard on that three ship advantage. The friendly Jutland is desperately trying to contest that central cap at Bravo. And the team are calling to focus fire on the Sovetsky Rossiya battleship, who's got him caught in a crossfire between himself and the enemy Jutland. Unfortunately, the call to focus fire comes just a little bit too late. The friendly Jutland hangs around in that contested cap circle just a little bit too long, and they're now three against seven. The only real good news here is that the team are still working as, well, a team. They're still calling out focus fire, they're still moving around in a mutually supportive, I don't want to say formation because they're certainly not sailing in formation, but they are all sticking together. They've now moved to a southern position where they can be shielded by the islands to the west from the majority of fire, hopefully, from the overwhelming number of enemy battleships over there. I mean, they've given up Alpha at this point. Alpha over there is a lost cause. That enemy Jutland, however, is still in Bravo and in the process of flipping it. And they may be able to put some pressure on him, providing Moggy 2, while simultaneously spotting and shooting at enemy ships over in the direction of Alpha, is able to cross the gap between the two islands just to the southwest of Bravo without dying and maybe spot the Jutland, although the Jutland is always going to outspot it. And that enemy Jutland hasn't really done anything particularly stupid yet. He, he can see that Moggy 2's Tashkent is coming because he's making no effort whatsoever to go undetected. Instead, he's just hosing the damage around. Eight kilometer range on his torpedoes and they are kind of slow, but hey, things are getting kind of desperate. Let's not also forget that there's still an enemy Kitakazi around here somewhere, and we haven't seen or heard from him in some time. But the Jutland, at least, who has already flipped Bravo and has no reason to be hanging around in there, should by now have gotten the hell out of here, because he can outspot, well, everybody remaining on Moggy 2's team. Oh, why did the Jutland do that? No, Jutland. I think the Jutland is suffering from a nasty case of victory disease. Don't understand why the Jutland just sat there until Moggy 2 spotted him. He's got the superior concealment. He should have been able to dictate the terms of the engagement and only get spotted when he wanted to. But, well, he's certainly not fast enough in a Jutland, even with an engine boost, to evade pursuit, even if Moggy 2 was pursuing him, and he's not because he doesn't know where that Kitakazi is. But even though Moggy is not pursuing him, he's got no chance of going undetected because he's firing his guns. He's smoking up, it's too little, it's too late. Celebrations at this point, however, would be premature because right before they nailed that Jutland, they were momentarily fighting two against six. They did just lose the Iowa. And the Yugamo also appears to have taken his brave pills and is closing in on the Missouri. You know, I'm not actually sure how that Yugamo got spotted, because the Missouri didn't use his radar. Wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't have any radar charges left. And the Yugamo is a good eight kilometers away from both the Missouri, and now more than eight kilometers away from Moggy 2's Tashkent, so unless he suddenly came around the corner of the island, guns blazing... Oh, he's dead. Two against four. But yeah, the Yugamo was to come around the corner, guns blazing, in a... Here I am, this is where the torpedoes are going to be coming from move. So obviously the Missouri down to the south, because he's not bloody stupid, is now making a beeline away from any potential Yugamo torpedoes, with what looks like an Alaska and potentially also a Masashi in hot pursuit. Meanwhile, Moggy 2 in the Tashkent, with absolutely nothing to lose and less than 30 seconds of this battle remaining, with the enemy team rapidly approaching a 100 point lead and only being slowed by the fact that he's closing to suicide range against the Jean Bart in order to occupy the same cap circle and prevent that from adding to the enemy team's advantage, desperately looking for the kill as the Missouri to the south focuses on just not dying and adding even more points to the enemy team's total and then, with one second remaining on the clock, the Jean Bart at 733 health 
the enemy team at nearly a full 100 points ahead and the Missouri screaming DIE in chat. The Missouri gets his wish, Moggy gets the kill giving his team a two point advantage with precisely zero seconds left on the clock. It doesn't get a lot closer than that. And I hope you all enjoyed it and I also hope I'm going to be able to get some good footage for you from HMS Belfast in London which, subject to any embargoes, should be popping up on the channel very, very soon. In the meantime, as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.